Good evening. This is the April 16th, 2019 meeting of the Planning Commission. It is 7.06 p.m. and I apologize that I'm late and we are starting late. Um, let's go ahead and start with roll call. Chair Mason. Here. Vice Chair Lagasse. Here. Commissioner Biasati. Here. Commissioner Hamilton. Here. Commissioner Lathine. Here. Commissioner Morgan. Here. And Commissioner Johnson is absent and excused from this meeting. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Lagasse, will you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. We can start with the February 19, 2019 uh, minutes. Does anybody have any comments or suggestions? Through the chair. I believe I have one tiny correction. I just have to find it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oh, um, correction in the recusals. Uh, the uh, announcement of conflict of interest. Um, just uh, my house is within 500 feet, a 500 foot radius of the 558 Hazel and not a 300 foot radius. Thank you. Thanks. And any other changes or suggestions? No. Does anybody want to motion for approval? I make a motion that uh, we approve the meetings of the Planning Commission of February 19, uh, 2019. Okay. Um, does anyone second? Second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any, aye. any opposed? Any abstentions? So the approval carries. Um, the second item is the March 19, 2019 approval of minutes. Any comments or questions on those? Do we have a motion? <coughs> Through the chair. Yes. I'll motion that the, we uh, approve the minutes of March 19, 2019. Okay, and is there a second from the commissioners? I second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? Nope. So the approvals will carry. We'll move on to item number two, public con comments on items not on the agenda. Hi, good evening, commissioners, uh, city staff. Uh, I'm, San, I'm the Weed Amin, San Bruno resident. And um, I just want to see if the city has any kind of a tool or website when it comes to looking up parcels that are affected by the FEMA flood maps. I know for, I, I for example, have multiple parcels that are affected, and it's very confusing to figure out which map, which flood map, which FEMA flood map to, to look at. And uh, also, some of my neighbors, uh, you know, since we're right next to, uh, next to me in the neighborhood, are, have difficulty coming up with which flood map to look at. But it'd be easier if the city had some kind of a parcel where we can type in our parcel or actual address. Uh, that'd be great. And if it's in the works, uh, is there a timeline to when would that come out? Thank you. Great. Thank you. So public comment is generally not an opportunity for questions and answers. But I will ask if there is anything available on the website. Do we know? Just because the member's here. So there is not, but I can give you my card and we can follow up separately. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment on items not on the agenda? No. Okay. So we will move on. Uh, is there any uh, conflict? Are there any conflicts tonight? No. No. So then we'll move on to the public hearings. So the first item, 4A, 659 Huntington Avenue. That's our only item tonight, actually. Good evening, uh, Chair Mason, members of the Planning Commission, Michael Smith, Planning Department staff. 
Uh, the project before you is 659 Huntington Avenue. It's a request for a use permit and architectural review permit to allow the construction of exterior architectural improvements in a 1,911 square foot first and second story addition at the north end of the building. Uh, this addition would enlarge the existing kitchen and add storage area for the existing restaurant associated with the Artichoke Joe's Casino. Uh, the 2.8 acre site um, is triangular shaped and bounded by San Mateo Avenue to the west, Huntington Avenue to the north and east, and Angus Avenue to the south. The site is developed with a combination of six separate buildings um, co connected through openings that comprise the Artichoke Joe's Casino and restaurant and a surface parking lot that, which is associated with the use. Um, on sheet A 2.1 in the drawings, you can see the delineation of the six different buildings that comprise the casino complex. Um, the subject uh, building that we're dealing with is the furthest north, and it's the kitchen building, and this was constructed circa 1935. Uh, the casino and restaurant complex uh, in total occupy 30, over 39,000 square feet of floor area, and there are 446 parking spaces associated with the use, both on and off site. Um, the applicant is proposing to remove the existing uh, kitchen building at the north end of the site and construct a first and second floor addition um, that would give the buildings that comprise the Artichoke Joe's Casino a more architecturally unified appearance. Uh, the addition, would, as I said, would add 1,211 square feet on the ground floor and about 700 uh, square feet in a storage room on the second floor. Um, the program space would, add, would enlarge the kitchen, um, create a cold and dry storage rooms near the, and near the loading dock, uh, and add a lactate room. Um, a rounded corner element that is clad in brick veneer would accent the uh, northwest corner of the building and anchor the development um, on San Mateo Avenue. Uh, the, student, the new storage rooms would replace three existing metal shipping containers located on the site. Um, and a fourth shipping container which is located in the, in the parking lot. The addition will be topped off with a tall rooftop parapet that would screen the rooftop mechanical equipment that you see on the building today. Um, and then along the San Mateo Avenue frontage of the building, um, they would have a bunch of uh, windows, faux windows, um, to add some architectural interest to the building and give it more of a pedestrian scale. And then again, at the second floor, there would be a storage room that's about 700 square feet. And so uh, the project would include a new canopy over the loading area, which is a little bit further east at the back of the building there on the north side. Um, currently, uh, we talked about the shipping containers. Um, so it's important to know that the project uh, would not alter the uh, historic portions of the building. There is one portion of the building that you'll see there that was constructed near the turn of the century. Uh, that portion of the building is not being altered as part of this project. Uh, the project would not um, increase the size of the restaurant or wouldn't increase patron capacity at that restaurant nor would it um, increase the patron capacity of the casino floor. So there's no, no tables being added or anything like that. Uh, this addition is solely to increase the size of the, ki uh, the kitchen area um, that's associated with the casino and make it more functional. So um, all of the exterior modifications um, are consistent <coughs> with uh, a 2017 remodel that was done to the building. And so it's meant to kind of make the, the complex look a little bit more holistic architecturally. One of the big benefits of the project, as I said before, is the uh, increased parapets along the north side of the building. Um, and what that would do is right now, as you drive in from the north, uh, north southbound direction, excuse me, from the north into downtown, you can see a lot of um, mechanical equipment on the roofs of those buildings. And um, so it's not, it's not really the best entrance to downtown. So this project would help rectify that. Uh, it gives you some nice tall parapets there and so that you don't see that. It's not the first thing you see when you drive into the, t to the downtown. 
Another benefit of the project are the proposed improvements to the San Mateo um, uh, elevation. Um, what they're planning to do with those, win those faux windows that I spoke about is they're looking to put um, exhibits in them. Um, so we, so because the program of the actual casino and the restaurant doesn't lend itself to actually putting uh, glazed windows on the outside. So um, to try to add some interest, and right now it's just a blank wall, is to have these faux windows in there and then put, put um, exhibits in them. There's a small parking lot adjacent to this side of the building. Um, and that, uh, so staff went out to the site and kind of assessed uh, the, the condition of that parking lot. The parking lot is in need of some repair. And so we are recommending that that be, um, through a condition of approval on the project, be updated or um, resurfaced and restriped as part of this project. Um, the landscape, though, we found out we found to be in good condition. Uh, we went to the ARC meeting in March, and um, there was some feedback we got from the ARC members as well. Um, one of the things was to uh, potentially come up with a better looking fence on that side of the building. If you look in some of the photos, you'll see a chain link fence there. So uh, we do have a condition of approval, and as I, as I recall, the applicant was amenable to it and that would to be replaced that chain link fence with the more decorative fence. Um, other things that came out of the ARC meeting, uh, they agreed with staff to um, update the parking lot, and that included not only the resurfacing and restriping, but also there's a number of signage um, that's, that's placed in buckets, and so we wanted to see that properly put in the ground. Um, and then the big thing that came out um, was regarding the design. They wanted to see some, continue the, some of the dental features that you see on the previous portion of the building, um, which was done in 2017, kind of continue through to this particular addition. And then also um, explore squaring off the rounded corner element. Um, some didn't think that it maybe blended well with the existing complex and the architecture of that complex. So what you'll have in your packet today is a number of different schemes that the architect came up with to try to um, address those concerns from the ARC. So we are looking for your feedback on that here today. Um, and then he'll go into further detail to kind of describe those different schemes to you. Um, I believe it's uh, attached to the staff report as Exhibit E, and um, there's, I think, six different schemes. Um, now I just want to go over a couple of the unique conditions of approval that you'll see attached um, to the staff report. Uh, condition number nine um, talks about the, uh, the faux windows, and we want to make sure that those are properly maintained for the life of the project and not just simply put something in there and let it deteriorate and whatnot. Um, so we want to make sure that they're cleaned um, and then that the exhibits are changed out periodically when they need to be changed out. And then there's condition of approval number 15, um, which talks about the storage structures that we had, had been accumulated on the site. There was four of them. And so in the future, um, to avoid that situation, we would like them to engage the department staff uh, and get approval from the director prior to installing those on the site. Um, overall, staff finds the proposed exterior modifications would be architecturally consistent with the alterations that were made to the casino in 2017 and will give the overall complex a more unified architectural theme. Furthermore, because of the project's ability to strengthen an existing downtown business and transform the northern entrance to downtown San Bruno, staff is recommending approval of the project based upon findings one through eight in the staff report and conditions of approval one through 31 in the staff report. And we all, again, are looking for commission direction on the preferred corner element treatment for, per the um, different alternatives that are provided um, as exhibit E. Uh, this concludes my staff presentation and um, available for any question or comment. Any questions from the commission? Um, I have a couple of things there. Um, 
First of all, the, the item is listed on the, the package as um, 5A. It should be 4A. It's a, minor, a very minor thing. But um, I, I'm delighted to see that the storage containers will be gone. It's a, good, a great move. Um, I think the, the ex new kitchen and storage will be easier for the staff and also uh, having the storage on site will make life a lot easier, I'm sure, for the staff. Uh, I like the high parapets concealing the unsightly uh, equipment. I also like the four windows at street level uh, to give some interest to passers-by. Uh, I would like to see one thing I, I would like to see is uh, two doors added to the staff uh, restrooms between the staff restrooms and the kitchen for the, the food preparation area, because basically the, the staff uh, restrooms are open onto the same space as the kitchen, which I don't, I don't think it's very hygienic. That's my own opinion. Um, I agree with relocating the uh, backflow device. It's pretty ugly where it is. And um, I have one question on a condition there that um, Perhaps um, you could answer for me. Um, one of the conditions is the cornice design shall support a ladder and a 330 pound load. Um, a fire officer carrying 80 pounds of, equi uh, of equipment. Uh, how do you achieve this requirement? Because most of these moldings, are, as far as I know, are made from a styrofoam with a, a cementitious coating. That's what I've seen up usually and they're very prone to damage. So I'm wondering how that would be overcome. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Um, see if I can attempt to answer your question regarding that. So that question came from the fire department and uh, what they're looking for is to make sure that the actual parapet itself, the parapet structure, um, is able to support the ladder as opposed to the, de what, I th what I think you're talking about might be the detail but the, um, that's attached to the parapet but the parapet itself is what they're looking for to be able to support that ladder. Okay, all right. Okay, Sorry. thank you. So I have a question. Um, the, the space that's in addition to, so that it would be 1,211 square feet of space on the first floor that's being added, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so um, I was just at Artichoke Joe's on this past week um, after reading this, and what is the traditional requirement for parking when a business adds another 1,211 square feet in downtown? Because I'll say I was there very early in the morning and the parking lot was full. Oh yeah, um, well they, the, the unique thing about this business is that they actually own off-site parking. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, when I did the calculations, uh, they have 446 spaces in total, um, and that is a little bit above, with the addition, what, what they would be required to have for that use. Okay, and there, I'm seeing in the packet, they're not expecting more, well, actually, let me out, maybe, it, maybe the applicant might wanna come up. Um, and I have a question maybe for the applicant as to the traffic that they're expecting by this expansion. Sure. Um, could we, could, um, are we going to let the applicant do the, his presentation yeah. as well? Okay, sure. great. Sure. Thank you. I've got an easel that I want to just put this up real quick. So quickly, I'm Dennis Samet, the uh, uh, CEO, president, if that's what you want to call it, in here of Artichoke Joe's, and uh, my architect is Steve Leslie, so I'll let him present, but in case you had any questions for me of what's happening company-wise, where we're going, et cetera, I'm here to answer all questions to the best of my ability, but I'll let Mr. Leslie take it. He's the knowledgeable one. Thank you. I forgot how far back this was. I would have done the triple the size, but <laughs> what I'll do is I'll probably explain them and then pass it and give it, to, uh -oh. I'll give it to Jerry to, to pass around and you guys can look at it up close and personal.
Thank goodness they're made out of foam. No one's going to get hurt. <laughs> I'm Stephen Leslie. Uh, I'm an architect. I uh, work for Artichoke Joe's Casino. Um, I, I guess I'll, should I start answering questions or maybe, I mean, Michael Smith explained pretty well what uh, um, the program, there's not much for me to add to that. He, he covered you know, why we're doing this, this uh, remodel and addition. Um, he did mention the kitchen was built in 1935. Um, it is, there are two working kitchens there. There's an Asian side and an American side of the kitchen. So it's, it's very crowded and we've been looking for new space for a long time. And uh, so we're adding a little space to the kitchen. Uh, the container bins that hold a lot of the storage are deteriorating and we need to replace those. So we wanted to replace that with a real building. And then we're doing uh, storage for the kitchen. And then the loading dock, which um, is in connection to the kitchen and the storage bin, we're going to be putting a canopy. So right now they go out into the rain to get to the storage and go back. And it's just, you know, we, it's, it's just not a good situation. So with that, we also had the great um, opportunity to raise the parapets to hide the mechanical. Uh, I've wor been working for Artichoke Joe's for 29 years now, and it's always bothered me that when you go into downtown San, uh, San Bruno, the first thing you see is mechanical equipment uh, on the building, and so this is a, a wonderful opportunity to cover that up, make a nice entry uh, to downtown. Uh, our tower design uh, is kind of, in a way, similar in mimicking and mirroring the tower design that's going on the south end of San Mateo Avenue. You see that brick tower. Mm -hmm. And so this would be kind of like two anchor points or bookends uh, we feel to the downtown. Uh, kind of a nice little metaphor uh, issue there. Um, as far as um, we responded to the ARC, as Michael Smith said, um, they weren't quite sure. We had a round tower initially. Uh, I'm not sure if that's in your packet, but uh, they asked for uh, to see if we can explore a square tower and different uh, visual things on that. And I will pass this as we go. This is just another um, look at uh, as if you're on. Oh, we won't build it upside down. <laughs> um, that's just another view looking more on San Mateo Avenue. I, I, I assume your packets, I don't know if they're, if you have these, but, and I don't know if they're in color, but I have six different versions of this. Scheme A is what I have on the top page, because, oh, they're all upside down. That's right, they fell. I forgot they all fell. But for the commission, they are in your packet, so these are a little bit bigger and on boards, but they yeah, are included in the packet. Around. But I have scheme A, B, C, D, E, and, uh, and, and all the way to F. And so the, the first uh, four are different looks of the square tower. Um, I just played with moldings and colors of canopy and, and such. One has uh, brick on the bottom and stucco on top. Um, this one is the, the original round tower that we had shown in the ARC. Um, with the addition of bringing the dentals around. Originally, the dentals didn't come all the way around, and, and some of the faux windows before were, um, were just trimmed. So this is an embellished version of what they saw in ARC. And I'll pass those around. Um, in answer to one of your questions, thank you. your question was, Yours was a restroom one. Yeah. You're, and you're, so I'm not sure what you mean. When you look, the only rest, the restroom you might be seeing that says employee restroom, is that yes, the one? That's so correct. that that is for kitchen employees. Right. Yeah. But I just think that, you know, between the door into the restroom and the, the kitchen area, there should be a break. There should be, it, it, it's not a big thing to add a door to the kitchen, into the kitchen, and also into the food prep area. Yeah, actually you go through a number of doorways and passages um, and you have to turn a corner even get to the restrooms. It, um, I mean, to add a door would just be inefficiency. If employees are coming back and forth constantly, so that door would just be slamming back and forth. 
but it's, it's out of the way and it's off on another corridor all by itself. So it, it's been working pretty good for many, many, many years. I'm not sure what you're suggesting, but a, a, a door would be pretty inconvenient to the workers, but we can... Uh, I mean, it could, be, it could be a swing door that would be easy to get in and out through. Could but be. It's just that I think there should be a break between the, that's my own personal view, okay. there should be a break between the restroom and the food prep, the kitchen food prep areas. That's all. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we'll look at that. But it's down a different corridor too, so it's... Uh, yes, I realize. So uh, when they go from food, food prep to the kitchen, they actually don't even go past the restrooms because it's down another corridor. But, right. Okay. And then my question was um, linked to the expected traffic or increased traffic that you may have and oh. whether Artichoke Joe's may be expecting. No. Um, All we're doing is just increasing the size of the kitchen and adding storage that we already have. Mm -hmm. So um, the actual the kitchen system. addition portion is only a couple hundred square it's feet. System. It's pretty oh, no, it's just kind yeah. of insignificant. Um, so we're not adding any new employees. They're, they're, they're just not going to be all over each other. Right now we have two kitchens that are yeah. there. Very small. We actually submitted pictures, and I took pictures of, uh, and it wasn't even the busy time. And it, if you've got a chance to see those, it's employees all over each other, mm -hmm. passing each other, trying to you know get to their cook line. And so this is just going to alleviate what we already have as a crowded condition and replace the storage bins that are deteriorating and the loading dock that is deteriorating. So we're not adding any new employees and no new added traffic. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, we'd love to have more traffic and more <laughs> people come. Yeah, um, so that's a good segue to, is there any plan for more parking? We, you know, we have, um, that's a good question. We actually had a approval years ago from planning department to do a parking garage and we did studies of the parking garage mm -hmm. and that south parking lot uh, I mean if we have the whole block this is our dream our dream would be have that whole 600 block we would um, rebuild all of the retail along San Mateo Avenue you know new retail buildings and then our parking lot would go over it and that worked out well with the parking layout and we can go three or four levels up. And we had it tiered back, so it wouldn't be like in your face straight up. Um, and that worked very well to the cost per dollars and how many cars we we're gonna get. And um, we are exploring that about the time BART decided to come through and that disrupted everything for a while. And then Caltrain came through and disrupted everything for a while. So um, it still is in the kind of the planning stages, but that's our dream because that way we can utilize that whole area. Right now, obviously, we don't own the strip on San Mateo Avenue, so we don't have the air rights above them, um, which would be, but it, I thought it'd be a win-win if we did, we can rebuild, you know, brand new, lower level retail and then parked okay. above. So I don't know if that really answered your question. It isn't our plans. Okay, thank but you. We're not submitting that tomorrow. Understood. Thank you. And are there any other questions from Philip? Through the, through the chair? This is just more a matter of curiosity than anything. So what are you going to do for food service during the time that this is going to be constructed? Is there a plan in place for that? There is, because that's a big issue for us. Uh, we have a couple of options we're looking at. Um, we looked at, you can actually um, rent um, portable kitchens. They come in a portable building, and uh, we already uh, we would need two of them. They're like they're 20 by 40, and we would put them in that um, parking lot that's next to the employee lounge, um, you know where that wrought iron fence is. So that'd be temporary. The other thing we looked at, which is even, um, was uh, you can get a, a, a real portable kitchen that's on wheels, and um, they told us if you buy it, you can actually sell them back for same price that you buy it for, so that's a viable thing too. It's a, it's a big um, kitchen truck that you can use. So we looked at both of those options and one of those we'll, we'll use. Okay. And then we'll do a temporary access that's kind of in the back, because Artichoke Joe's is that L shape, so in the corner you wouldn't see it from the street, 
but over in the corner we would do a temporary access for the kitchen staff to go through and deliver the food and still get to the dining room. But we'll probably, and we can show that. That, that was more just a curiosity yeah. than, than well, uh, but that is we did think of that that's okay. a big issue to us too okay thank you thanks uh, right. i just wanted to comment on that really quickly because it's not really part of the project in front of you right now and so i just wanted to make clear that um i'm, I'm glad you asked the question because it's not something i had i, I had thought of in, in my review um, but now that i'm hearing the answer that would need to come back as a as a tup um, for that for that kind of approval to have that temporary structure out in the parking lot for a certain set duration Okay, and then I had one last question on these different schemes Which is the one that you guys preferred the most? Uh, the one that I the, the need the, the, the embellished one and the one that's on the front cover uh, Scheme A so I put Scheme, scheme A on front for a reason and also if you look at the embellished uh, renderings it's scheme A. The, the other renderings is my out-of-the-box CAD program, and then I went to a professional renderer that did the ones with the cars and the, the neat-looking sky. That would take me forever. Um, so that's scheme A. So that, okay. that was my preferred. Uh, so I do like so the suggestion of ARC from the round to the square. I, after doing the square, I do like the square. I know. I, I don't know if you guys don't, but <laughs> Does so, that um, I tried to bring uh, uh, no wrong answer here. So if you guys said, hey, we love C, I'm okay with any of them, but you asked me which one I preferred. But I'd be, if you guys said C, B, D, or F, I'd say okay. fine. Is there a difference to you on having a curved space versus a square one as far as the way you're going to line up your kitchen on the inside? You know, it, it was very minimal. If you were, uh, you, unfortunately, you don't have what ARC saw, but there's that little indentation, and one was square and one was round. I, actually, the square one turned out to be a little bit more square footage, you know, like maybe four square feet, just because it's squared out instead of around. Mm -hmm. But it was very, very minimal difference in footprint. Okay. But, Thank you. But I do like the square. Um, I just want to ask staff, or would staff like the commission to recommend one as well as a favorite? Okay. Yes, uh, it, would, it is preferable that we come out of the meeting today with, with one scheme to move forward with so that we, um, so that everyone's clear about what, what gets constructed. <laughs> so with that said, I'm going to ask maybe the ARC to start because you've seen this and you've seen how it has evolved. Through the chair. I would like to uh, thank the applicant for being uh, very flexible and responsive and uh, providing several uh, good looking alternatives, although like, <laughs> like you, I prefer the, I, as soon as uh, I went through the six uh, options, I, I knew that, that, was, that option A was the one that best fit what we had discussed. And I think the, the addition of the, the, the dental detail around the, the cornices which really helps. And I would also like to thank Commissioner Lethin for having the really good eye that, that, that uh, suggested those improvements. Well, I'll put a, plate, a plaque with their name on it. <laughs> <laughs> Through the chair. Thank you. It was re it was really fun to meet with you um, at the ARC, and um, and thank you for entertaining uh, my idea of squaring the the tower off. I'm delighted by it. I think it looks great, and I'm really happy that that you're excited about it too. I am. I am. And um, I like A and I like B. Um, if anybody were moved to do B, I might make the upper window longer to compensate for the loss of the dental detail. But I I like both of them very much. Great. Okay. Any other commissioners? Commissioner? Through the chair. Um, I had the benefit of actually being at that ARHC meeting as a resident, so I, I, I got a sneak preview of, of, um, of this. I do prefer A. I think it looks great. I think um, I echo uh, what was said earlier about um, this really transforming the entrance to downtown, which um, 
sorely needs it. Um, not just not just because of already choked Joe's, but you know the the entirety of the of uh, downtown needs this this type of facelift, and this is a great uh, great start to that. And so I would I would support option A. Great, thank you. And the project. Thank you. I'm going to invite the our other two commissioners if you have any preferences. Uh, on one small point I have: um, Could we have black pointing to the bricks instead of white? I think it looks much more subtle. Black. Pointing between the bricks. Oh, in the front like, lines? Yeah, I don't like the white pointing. I can do a rendering of that and see how that looks. I, I think, it, you know, I think it always looks better with black pointing or a dark, even a dark gray. But anyway, it's a preference, personal choice. Through the chair, you know, are we talking like a colored mortar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd have to look, visualizing it, it would, I mean, you wouldn't see the individual bricks. I like seeing the individual bricks with the white, the white. Ac really accenting it. With the black, it would certainly be more of a blended block. But if you want me to show one of the staff, I, I can certainly do a rendering of that. I think I prefer the white. But it probably, in the real world, won't end up as white as it looks on the rendering. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty, but. Commissioner Bissell, any comments? Yeah, I, um, because the other building at the other end of the block or the other end of the street that your book ending is round, uh -huh. the scheme D caught my eye. But now that I sit back and look at the entirety of the project, the building has a lot more square lines than the other building, so I see where you want to go with that to keep that architectural feature going. So I would be fine with scheming in, in the big picture of things. Okay. And as long as I got the floor for a second, Michael, can we add okay, um, the use permit that's going to need to come forward? Can we add that to this project tonight to save time or no? Uh, no, we can't, unfortunately. Um, there, there's separate findings that need to be met for, for a TUP, um, which are not before you today. Okay. So um, we would need to bring that to you separately. Great. Thank you. Great. So uh, I, I wanted to thank the applicant. I appreciate the investment in the downtown. It's really a great time right now to be in downtown. And this is going to be, you know, like everybody has said so far, I want to echo that between El Camino and San Mateo Avenue and now this um, side facing Artichoke Joe's, I think it's just gonna be a great entrance into San Mateo Avenue and it's gonna show the change that's happening. So thank you for that. Um, I also prefer scheme A um, and I have to say I do like the white. Um, I think it gives it a really clean, crisp look. Um, I, and so I, I'm not sure if staff, um, should we, in the recommendation, would you prefer that we also have a color or just a scheme and you will play with the color with the applicant? How, how detailed would you like the recommendation and the approval? Well, if there is consistency to just evaluate the use of the color, we can look at that more and that's typically something that we could approve at the staff level, but it would be nice if there's just clear direction to either examine that or not, just because you, you've, weighed, you've weighed that option but we will need a condition that selects the specific scheme. So I think I heard there was a preference, though not complete consensus around scheme A. Is that correct? That's what I'm hearing as well. Okay. <clears throat> Would it be appropriate to make a motion in, in terms of choosing the alternative at, at this point? Yeah, let me just jot some notes down about a new condition and then motion, let me know and we, I will read that into the record and then we'll type it into the minutes and add it into the condition. Okay. Would you like to motion? If uh, Director Darcy is ready, Director Smith is ready. Oh, you're ready. Okay. I can, sorry, I can probably do it on the fly. <laughs> okay. you make the motion and then, and then I'll read the proposal. And I want to preamble that by saying I will be selfish when I uh, uh, go with my own preference, but if there's a friendly amendment, that's totally kosher. <laughs> so uh, I would like to motion that uh, we approve uh, scheme A as presented uh, with, the, uh, with the color scheme in indicated 
in at least in its general lines as our chosen alternative. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposition? No. Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. That is carry the motion. And then the next step then. So the condition of approval that we'll add to confirm your action here will be to be a newly numbered condition of approval that will say the final building permit plans submitted to the city for the building permit for construction shall be consistent with exhibit E scheme A attached to the Planning Commission staff report on April 6, 2019 with the color scheme. The plans shall examine the use of black grouting in the brick, but final approval of that shall be subject to the review of the Community and Economic Development Director at the Building Permit Review phase. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We don't need to, to vote on that, though. That's already in the record. Correct. Okay. Yes. I just want to confirm that. OK, great. So thank you to the applicant and the owner. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, the next, let me see, the next area for discussion is the city staff discussion. Um, and I'll let Director Smith take that away. Great. So thank you so, oh, thank you. I want to give an update on the exciting plan that we've been working on and you've been working on too, the San Mateo Avenue streetscape plan. And I wanted to mention that the Planning Commission is tentatively scheduled to hold the special meeting on May 7th. It will start at the regular time at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Senior Center and will be a similar meeting to this and will be televised and open to the public with public comment. I have confirmed that as of right now, we have the exactly the required quorum. We have four of seven with Chair Mason confirmed, Vice Chair Lagasse confirmed, Commissioner Lethine confirmed, and Commissioner Morgan confirmed. The other commissioners are excused and absent, and I would welcome them to review the packet and also provide me with any comments in advance of the meeting that either myself or the chair can read into the record. Um, and I, because I know they've been heavily involved in that plan and attended meetings, and this is a critical meeting. The purpose of this specific meeting is for the city streetscape plan and staff to present the preliminary draft San Mateo Avenue streetscape plan and also to report back on the stakeholder and community input to date. I think you know we've had the walk shop, the pop-up community workshop, which was very well attended on a Saturday and the stakeholder meetings, which weren't attended by you, but we got some really great input from key stakeholders in the community. Um, in case you're wondering why isn't it here tonight, it just wasn't ready. We just had that community workshop, but we wanna keep this moving. It's a council and commission priority. It's also a city priority, bless you. Thank you. So it's being prepared. And May 7th is a really important meeting to get your input. You're the only, um, city commission that's reviewing it. So this won't go to the city council, for example, for their, also their review and input. Um, they've delegated that review to you. So this is very important. And we wanna hold it on um, May 7th so that we can return to a stakeholder meeting. That second stakeholder meeting will follow right on the heels of the meeting on May 8th tentatively. And then a community meeting. And this will be sort of the big, um, community meeting that will be on a weekday at 7 p.m. here at the Senior Center. Um, and that is tentatively scheduled for Wednesday, May 22nd at 7 o'clock p.m. So if all of this lines up, our goal is to bring it back to the commission a final time for a vote um, on the final plan and then a city council meeting to accept the plan. And right now we're targeting June and July for those. So. Um, trying to keep this on schedule. We've posted a lot on the project webpage, so you can always check there. Um, but we are really looking forward to the May 7th meeting to get that input from you. Um, and that concludes my updates, but I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the streetscape plan. Any questions? 
I, I did have, I just wanted to um, ask if the, when I saw the streetscape plan, it didn't, I know that the city doesn't own it, but technically it's kind of visually part of the streetscape. If there's any work being done on the Caltrain station, it's quite an eyesore. So I don't know of any work okay. right now. It's separately owned. Um, I do know we're focusing on Posey Park and yeah. the fountains, which as you know, are mm -hmm. no longer fountains. Um, and they failed, and so we're working on that. Um, okay. Okay. So the fountains are the city's property. Correct. Then. Yeah, that little Posey Plaza okay. is the city property. Posey Park, sorry. Posey Park, yeah. Yeah, and we have specifically asked the consultants to focus on that and solve the issue with the fountains. Um, okay. And just thank you, I attended the pop-up event and it was really well attended. There were, I was talking to owners of businesses, there were a lot of residents and I thought it was well um, facilitated as well in the way that you were asking people to identify what they liked, what they'd like to see. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you. So mm -hmm. I, we will share the feedback um, from that event with you. I think it's really important that you sort of read that so that you can capture what the community input was. Um, and we would welcome anyone to attend the Planning Commission meeting or the community workshop too to give us more feedback. We've been trying to experiment or bring in sort of different community engagement ideas and this is a great example with the walk shop and the community pop-up of, of being a little more creative and trying, and, and trying to capture a different audience and so it's good to hear that feedback and we also have the project website mm -hmm. um, and the survey so you'll see the survey results too. Um, and we've gotten a lot of responses with that. But now's the chance if anyone else wants to um, do the survey, I think it might still be open, but we're welcome to getting any more input. Thank you. And then the May 16th architectural review committee members. Okay, yes, we are looking for members for the May 16th architectural review committee. Great, we have a New, we have two commissioner, new commissioners who want to volunteer. So I have Commissioner um, Hamilton and I have Commissioner Morgan and Commissioner Biasati. Oh, there you go. You good? Um, well, it's always nice to have a backup just in case. We were all looking at our calendars and they two, we went so too quickly. Fast, yeah, but May is a busy month now. With now you have potentially four or five Maybe. meetings. Okay. Does anybody want to be a backup? I would be happy to act as backup. I was just checking that I was here. <laughs> okay, great, Vice Chair Lagasse. And I should add that on May 7th, um, Vice Chair Lagasse, Lagasse and Commissioner Lathine and I will be at a meeting on the Recreation Aquatic Center. So mm -hmm. we will rush over here. We will have to miss maybe a tiny bit of that meeting, but we will, we will, we will make it. So thank you to the both of you to, for double booking yourselves to make the May 7th meeting. Uh, through the chair, uh, this question is the uh, plan architectural review committee is in City Hall, I believe, is it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so the architectural review committee meetings take place at 6, uh, 6 p.m. in room 115 in City Hall. 6 p.m.? Yes. Okay, thank you. Great, so we'll move on to section 5B, the planning commission discussion. Does any, do any of the commissioners have anything to say or to um, any questions, comments? Through the chair? Yes. I'd like to welcome our newest commissioner. Thank you very welcome, much. Welcome, sir. Thank I you. hope you're having fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> welcome to the team. Thank you very much. I look forward to working with you all. Very good. Okay. And a reminder that we also have the, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to attend the, uh, in San Mateo uh, at the library, so, uh, uh, a presentation uh, this time I think it's on housing and they've been very uh, the, very welcoming and very interesting to uh, to mingle with the other uh, co uh, commissioners from other uh, departments uh, is there is there anybody I, I'm, I'm do I do worry about the issue of quorum and so I wanted to check if anybody else was going so that we don't find ourselves accidentally in a, in a position of conflict of interest. Uh, I'm going. 
Okay. I'm going, but it, we're not, I don't think it would be a conflict even if all seven of us went because we're not talking about anything in, in San Bruno, correct? Mm -hmm. it, would, it, would be gen, it would be general, just talking about learning about housing. Yeah, issues we, in general. If we do that, then we just have to take you know, the precaution to not have the appearance of conflict of interest, for example, not sitting together to... Yeah, they did a good job with that, the, the, yes, the last one. They split us all up, and I, we didn't, I didn't even know you were there until you already <laughs> left. <laughs> so. Great, thank you. Um, I just had um, two questions. One is... Um, I heard, I watched on the city council meeting the housing element report that was given, and I was wondering if that report could be given to the planning commission as well. So I can't, that would be the, since this isn't on the agenda, I can't respond and confirm that, but okay. if you send me an email separately as a follow-up, I can respond to that. Okay. Um, and then my other question is, when would we expect, it's been quite a few months, an update on the Aquatic Center? So I can put this on the next agenda and give you an update. But okay. I can say, because it was publicly advertised and distributed, that at the last city council meeting last week, there was that presentation, which mm -hmm. should be up on YouTube right now, so for everyone watching, if that's publicly accessible. and there was a presentation made that and had a lot of great information. So, but I will give a more detailed update the next meeting. Okay, May. great. Uh, just uh, through the chair, I wanted to check with uh, Director Smith whether it, was, uh, it would be appropriate for uh, Commissioner Lethin and I to uh, give our impressions since we do sit on behalf of the Planning Commission on the, the advisory committee me meetings. So, I'll check. At, not right now, but at the next okay. meeting, and I'll just check with the city attorney. I think if it's on the agenda, and we, also if we give the opportunity for the public to be aware of that, then we could have that discussion, okay. or your comments in my report. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, and I also wanted to welcome our new commissioner, but Commissioner Biasadi beat me to it. So welcome. Thank you very much. We have a lot of work to do this year. So thank you, everybody. We're going to go ahead and adjourn the meeting. It is 7.58 p.m. Have a good night.